Good morning. Good morning. My I Church family. They did. Good morning, my I Church family. We went live, and I mean live all over. Because <laughs> everybody was hearing us. And hey, that's our fault, but it's a good thing. And I just spoke on something being our my fault and it turned into the good for our Father. So I'm praying that the start of this, by me and Brother Matthew this morning being able to speak with you and see you within us, that we'll be able to do something that'll bring you closer to our Father this morning. So glad to be with you and glad to be with my Brother Matthew here and Oh, what a day we had yesterday down at the beach. Uh, uh, really two days that we enjoyed the fellowship. And um, there's a lot of fish in that ocean. But sometimes they just don't bite. <laughs> but what a, what a time we had. I don't know, I don't know if it could have gotten any better. Maybe with some fish, but we sure ate some fish. <laughs> we look forward to seeing... You, where we can tell you, we look forward to you signing up on the sheet for next year because we, we're already planning another trip. But more importantly, I'm planning on a trip to the good old gospel ship far beyond the sky. How about you this morning, Brother Matthew? Amen. 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 I'm going to turn it over to my young coming up. Our church, take over, and the word, he can draw you as well and let you drink from the well or, or give our father that sip of water that he's asked for. Do you have a drink of water for us this morning that where we can share together? We have a drink for you. All you've got to do is just come and take a sip. We love you. Don't forget, send any prayer requests and praise report. I'll write them down and I'll take it to the altar. Go to our app. Fill in, fill in that permission form as to where if you send in a prayer request, I'll get it. And then I'm able to contact you back either email or just a phone call. Or you send in that, another prayer request. But we need to open up one another where it's just not a one-time visit. I want to do it all week. Because we need one another all week to make contact with our Father. So blessed that you're with us. And I look forward to being in touch with you. Go to our app. Brother Matthew, hits yours this morning. He's got something on his mind, our church. I love it when the good Lord is working on the youth's mind because he's letting us know that don't give up. Don't give up. Good to see you, Brother Matthew. Good to see you, too. All right. Thank you, Terry Paul. Good morning, Hi, church family. Yeah, it's on. <laughs> uh, it's okay. Good morning, Hi, church family. Good morning, my family. Mine and Brother Terry Paul's Hi, church family. I just wanted to take a brief moment to discuss how God is amazing. How God... God's goodness has been shown to me and to family members of mine from this past week because of a situation. First of all, last week, I'm, in, I'm currently in the middle of doing my college preparation, and we're approaching the middle of it. And in the middle, you're always supposed to be taking two of these called field tests for what I'm doing, you know, truck driving, CDL, stuff like that. They want you to take a field test. All throughout that entire week, I was feeling so incredibly unprepared and just not ready for what was to come next because I knew that if I would have failed at least one of those tests, I would have been dismissed from the entire course. So I had to have a little time with the Father. Ask Him, Lord, this situation is yours. I know that you believe in me. 
but help me to believe in me. Because the Bible says, if you can't love yourself, how can you love the Father? So I had a long talk with the Lord. And when that day finally come, I, was, I, I just kept telling myself, you've got this. The Father is with you. He has never left you, nor has He ever forsaken you. And as I did both of those tests, ran through that entire course, I passed both of them first try. That is the first thing that happened last week that shows how good God is. Second incident is a little bit more is a little bit more serious. I had a cousin, Zachary, who woke up one morning. Well, he didn't. Well, honestly, he didn't wake up. His his mother and his father went into his room one morning and they realized that he was incredibly incredibly warm and he and he just wasn't conscious they dialed 911 sent him to Cape Fear Valley Hospital up in Fayetteville to see what in the world was going on with him and he tested positive for covid that day and his, they said that his vitals were incredibly off, that his blood pressure was 190 over 114. It wasn't looking very good for him. The doctors asked his mother and father to visit them in the office to discuss what the situation looked like. And it just didn't look great for him. However, they still had belief in the father that God had this exact situation in his hands and he knew just what to do. And this is why I'm very happy to tell you that an, about an hour and 30 minutes after that, I am happy to tell you that Zachary was allowed to come home and sleep soundly in his bed once again. Amen. That exact same day, the Amen. father took this situation, put it in his hands and, zeal, and healed Zachary's body. Amen. These two situations go to show just how good the Father is and how He's not done with you yet. Amen. Amen, Brother Matthew. If that doesn't rattle the sheets on your bed and make you get up, I don't know. I don't know. I just don't know. But that'll make you. I'm not worried about you changing clothes. You can wear your pajamas in here. But you got to get up and come on. And we encourage you to do that. Remember, and, and don't forget this message today. I want you to sit up on the edge of your bed or sit up in your recliner because the message today is going to be wisdom, wisdom for mental health. We all are in a state of some kind of health, mentally, physically. And the more as things are coming our way that... Our declining in our health sometimes and our wisdom sometimes is declining and deteriorating. But God can renew our strength and we will be able to rejoice in the Lord and be glad in Him. I pray today that y'all will be able to rejoice and be glad in our Almighty Father, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings this morning. We say stay tuned for the message. Come back at the end of the service and me and Brother Matthew is going to close it out in prayer. But we pray that you have a safe and blessed morning. But put God first in your house and line your children up right behind you and your wife. And God bless y'all. We pray to see you soon.
Good morning, Shiloh. Yeah, Lord, that sounds good, y'all. That sounds good. Just so good to have each and every one of you. It's just a wonderful, wonderful looking congregation this morning. Thank you for coming and being with us. And as always, thank you for coming and uh, being a part of Shiloh family. Amen. Amen. And if by chance, just by chance, uh, if anybody's here this first time, uh, you're family now. You're, you're, you're not a visitor. You just became part of the family. So as always, as with everybody, we want everybody to come in, make stuff at home. Feel free to worship the Lord as they feel led this morning. Can you do that for me? Amen. 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 Just appreciate it so much. You know, I was sitting here thinking this morning, I am so thankful that there's not a checklist that we've got to check off a bunch of items on the list before we come to the Lord or we, uh, you know, got to belong to a certain group or make a certain amount of money or give some mention tithes or anything like that. You know, we don't have to do all that, you know. The Bible says we just have to be a whosoever, just a whosoever this morning. Amen. Amen. And I'm so glad that uh, I'm a part of the whosoever, and I know you are too. Amen. Amen. Just a whosoever. You know, the Bible says, and quote a verse that everybody knows, uh, Miguel. I mean, no, known since the childhood. That's John 3, 16. In fact, you can quote it with me. And it says, for God so loved the world, that the only begotten Son, Not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. If you notice, the whosoever, the whosoever. And that's uh, so happy that uh, we belong to that today. And uh, like I said, we don't have to do a checklist or anything like that. Just whosoever will come. Whosoever will come. And so I'm so glad that I'm part of that today. And um, if you're not, if you're not a part of that whosoever this morning, you can be. Amen. You can be. So, uh, you know, today's the day that the Lord has made. Amen. So let's, uh, let's rejoice in it. So as always, so good to see you. And just do one more thing before I let you go. Turn to somebody and tell them that you love them this morning. Amen.
to pray. Amen. 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 Well, about three of you have. <laughs> Can I just invite the rest of you to let's go down to the river and pray this Amen. morning? It may not be a literal river, but it is a river of life. And it is flowing free to whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord. As Brother Terry has reminded us. I just want to go ahead and say to who, who, the whosoever's that have walked in this room this morning. When you stepped through that door, you stepped into the Father's house. Amen. Alright, hold on a minute. I'm talking to my men right now. You guys, we're not at the beach anymore. Wake up. All right. All right Ladies, y'all were not down doing whatever y'all called it y'all were doing yesterday. <laughs> Eating, shopping, whatever y'all. You're not there anymore. We're in the house of the Lord to worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. Maybe we just need to pause a minute and remember where he's brought us from. Amen. And look at where we're at now. And I believe in that moment we can find rejoicing in our heart. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. I'm glad you're here this morning and we welcome those that are joining us on iChurch. Maybe it's your first time of joining us on iChurch. And if it is, we're glad you're here. You're just as much a part of this family as if you were sitting in this room. To those of you that are in this room, there could be some in the room today that not been here before. I want to tell you when you stepped in that door, you just walked into the Father's house. So go ahead and make Amen. yourself at home. That's right. Go ahead and let's celebrate. Amen. And I just feel an urgency. I was going to do it a little bit later, but we're going to go ahead and do it now. We're going to go ahead and do it now even before we just pray. Because sometimes we need to understand. Sometimes we need to catch the vision. And this morning I'm, 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 I'm getting it in my spirit. You see, I tell you often that we're always, as children of God, we're on a learning experience. We're on an excursion with the great I Am. And as we've been discovering on Wednesday night, we get to come and sit down at the table with Him and commune with Him. Well, this weekend, I'm going to be honest, we here at Shiloh, we are a missional church. Those of you that are here, y'all can say amen to that. Because you know we're always on a mission. We're busy doing the Master's business. And I think we ought to be. Uh, we are a missional-minded people. Uh, we are... Uh, embracing all that God has for us and believing God to do more for us. We're intentional about that. But somebody walked in the room this morning and they said to me, I said, how you doing today? And they said, I am double blessed. <laughs> I like that. And then someone else standing near to me said, I just had a commercial pop in my mind. And it's Raisin Bran. And there's two scoops of raisins in Raisin Bran. And I'm just going on in the presence of God thinking, God, I'm double blessed and I've had two scoops poured on me. Glory be to God. But before we pray, we're going on a little journey and uh, I, knew our, I know our men are expecting it and if I don't do something, they're going to be disappointed. But God spoke to me about 1 a.m. on Friday, well, Saturday morning. Because you see, I was on a mission like I always am when I'm about whatever I'm doing. I was intentional. And I left Roseboro on Friday morning and I was on a mission. And the mission I was on was I was going to catch fish. <laughs> we went fishing. We didn't necessarily go catching, but we went fishing. <laughs> but about 1 o'clock in the morning, it appeared to me what the mission was. So I want to ask Darren if he will. I've got just a few pictures. Oh, Lord. And I know they're going to be disappointed, but it, it's not about the fish. I'm going to show you something here. Now, I want this, is that, that's my last picture, ain't it? I want this picture to stay there a moment. Because at a little after 1 o'clock in the morning, on Saturday morning, God showed up on the beach. 
These guys had been sitting around fellowship and we had been fishing and we had had a good time. I, I'd been at it since 10 o'clock that morning. And y'all know me, the adrenaline's running. I, I'm not asleep. Somebody's taking these pictures and that was me. <laughs> but God spoke to me because I was on a mission and the mission was to catch fish. But Alan ministered to me in a way that I hadn't been ministered to in a long time. And God was whispering in my spirit and said, sometimes you just need to stop. And you need to kick off your shoes. Look at his feet. And you need to relax in the presence of those that are around you and in the breath of God. I'm going to preach. But not right now. I saw the look on your face. <laughs> so I'm going to give you a pre-sermon. Soul shepherding. The guy said to me, said, Pastor, we've enjoyed this weekend because we've watched you be able to be you and rest. Yes. God spoke to me on early Saturday morning about 1.30 as I watched those guys. Now, Scott's like me. He can't rest. He breathed for a brief minute, but he didn't rest long. But God said, sometimes you need to just stop and allow soul refreshing in my presence. You see, many Christians miss the importance of Jesus' solitude and silence. Every pastor, every minister leader, every caregiver, and any disciple of Jesus needs to learn from Jesus' example of intimacy with God. And I don't want to miss this. So when I went back to the Gospel of Mark and did a Bible study on Jesus' solitude and silence, continually Jesus withdrew from the people. Daily life and activities and demands of His ministry to be alone with the Father and to pray. Jesus' solitude and silence is a major theme of the gospel. His ongoing intimate relationship with his Abba was the source of his compassion, the source of his wisdom, and the source of power that we see on every page of the gospel. So today, I see in the book, Take My Yoke upon you for it is easy yes the priority of jesus solitude and silence and everywhere in the gospel and it is how he began his ministry it is how he made important decisions is how he dealt with troubling emotions like grief is how he dealt with the constant demands of his ministry and the care for his soul it's how he taught his disciples. It's how he prepared for important ministry events. It's how he prepared for his death on the cross. And today, my friend, Jesus invites us to join him in his solitude so we can know God as Abba also and share his love with others. Will you stand to your feet this morning? You see, we're about to welcome the presence of God in this room. He's already here. He was here this morning a little after seven when I walked in this room. He was here as the choir and the praise team began to come in and pass, uh, began to minister to my heart in their preparation for this service. The good news about that today is I thought about, I sent him a text a little while ago, I thought about Nathan normally standing there and Nathan sitting there and I thought about but God you're there wherever he's at today at that wedding for their solitude and to those of you that are joining us on iChurch he's right there in that place your home your office your automobile wherever it is you've made your sanctuary today he's there but church I don't want to miss this moment I don't want to miss this moment this morning because we hadn't walked into this room today just to sing a few songs and hear a message and go home unchanged. I want to be changed with solitude with God the Father this morning. I want to take a moment in His presence today to say, Lord, here I am. 
and you have permission. You have permission. You know God is a gentleman. And I believe we have to give Him permission to do things in our life. He don't force His way in. Never read where He came in and He kicked but one door in. That's a metaphor. And He kicked in the gates of hell and took back what the enemy had stolen. But can I say to you today, He's waiting for you to give Him permission. And look, I've had enough church services where we just run around hooping and hollering and we left and went home and said, my, oh, that felt good, but nothing really happened. I just believe today that God has got us right in the middle of a situation where we need Jesus. We need Him to come in as we lay aside the facade of Christianity and say, Lord, here I am, an imperfect person, and I need you today. I don't know what brought you here this morning. I don't know whether you're here today out of tradition and this is where you've always been, so you've just done it today without giving it any thought. I don't know if you're searching for something today and you're in need of uh, an encounter with a holy God to rush into your situation and do a miracle today. I just want to tell you, if that's you this morning, He's got you. He's got you today. And there may be someone in this room this morning that your life just feels like everything that is comfortable and familiar to you is up in shambles today. Can I just tell you this morning, God knows where you're at and He knows what you have need of even before you ask. We're about to ask Him right now. I want us to say to Him this morning, God, here am I. I need you today. You hear me say it often. We're just imperfect people striving to be like a perfect God and we really need Him this morning. Join me today, if you will. Heavenly Father, we open up our hearts today and we give you access to come in. God, I'm an imperfect man with many flaws, but yet you love me just as I am. But in the midst of that, I know that you love me too much to leave me with my imperfection, to leave me with my flaws. No, Lord, really, you love me too much to leave me in my state of sin. God, it is your will. I've read it to bless me, to prosper me. <laughs> Oh, there's so many attributes of what you want to do in my life today, God, but I must render my heart to you. So today, at this place of solitude, in the presence and the breath of Almighty God, not only here, but literally all over the world today, there are people that are assembling together and they're offering themselves to you and they're saying, here I am, God, and I need you this morning. Meet with us in this place. I don't know the magnitude of the hurt and the pain that some folks in this room are feeling, but you know God. And I believe you brought them to this service in this place today for a divine healing touch to their heart. There's some folks in here that are on the brink of giving up and they don't even know, God, what they're doing. They've lost focus of their capacity of who they are, where they are. They're just going through the motions. But I believe today that you brought them here for a God encounter. That the Holy Spirit has access to us today. Do in us and through us that that only you can do, God. And I, we, all of us will be very careful, Lord, to give you praise. You're welcome in this house. You're welcome in our lives. We unlock the door and open wide and let you in today to do business with the Master. We're not here to put on a facade. We're not here to entertain. We're here to have an encounter with a holy God. We give you access to our lives today, Lord. Create in me, O oh Lord, a right spirit today. A spirit of celebration in the presence of God. Have your way in this room today and through our iChurch experience. Bless those that have come, Lord. We're praying for those that hadn't got here yet that we believe is coming, Lord. Because we're looking for one more. In the name of Jesus, we ask these things today. And the church said, Amen and Amen. Most of you already know this, but we here at Shiloh believe in worshiping God two ways. We believe in what we've already been doing and will be doing in this service today. That that we offer up unto Him. Nothing will ever take the place of that. But then we also believe in God and worshiping Him in another way. And that is that that we not only do vertically, but that that we do horizontally. 
how we love on one another. And the Bible says, as I have done it unto you, I have done it unto him. So will you just join me today as he plays and we step across the aisle and we embrace one another and we love on one another as we were loving on Jesus. Can you do it now? Welcome to the house of the Lord today. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. Renew a right spirit within me. Made in me a clean heart, O oh God. And renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thine presence, O oh Lord. Take not thine Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation and renew a right spirit within me. And renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thine presence, O oh Lord. Take not Praise the Lord, Amen. Glory to God. And renew a right spirit within. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. And renew a right spirit within. Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God, hallelujah. Glory to God, hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God, hallelujah. worship the Lord. It's alright to love on one another. It's alright to let your neighbor know they're alright in your eyes. Amen. For God so loved the world. I think we ought to love the world. Amen. Not the things of this world, neither the things that are in this world, but the things that God has created for us. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask Sister Kayla if she'll make her way down towards the front. While you're finding you a place this morning, stop right down here, Miss Kayla. Stop right down here. Right here. Come on, baby. Come on, Miss Shale. I want every school teacher to join Michelle and Kayla down at the front. I want anybody that works in the school system, if you work in our school system, I, I want you down front this morning. See, the Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. We've got an agenda, but we're going to get to that agenda. I just had a request to come in to me by one of our very own that teaches in the Cumberland County system. And she said, Brother Eddie, before we go home today, we need to pray. We need to pray for our schools. She said, my school particularly needs prayer. She said, our young folks are killing each other. She said, they've had the second one of their students to be killed this year by a fellow student. I just need you to stand with me this morning and stretch your hand forward this way. Amen. We lined these, these folks up and there was probably two or three times that many that Sunday morning because we were focused on that that day. We prayed over them before the school year ever started. But guys, I want to tell you something. It's not a one and done deal. We've got to keep these folks before the Lord because they're on the front line of the battlefield. Amen. And it doesn't matter to me what North Carolina legislation says. I know this. If the name of Jesus be lifted up, <laughs> he said, I'll draw all men unto me. That's right. It may be a quiet echo in the Spirit of Almighty God that resonates on a campus somewhere. 
that simply when a student opens up a conversation that the presence of God can be brought to the forefront. But we need to pray for these, these that are instructing our young folks. We need to pray a hedge about them and the anointing of the Holy Spirit on them when the opportunity arrives to be able to stand for Jesus. Join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we know that we are in spiritual battle today. And Holy Spirit, we're sensitive, God, to what you are doing. But we know, God, that there is a war that is going on between the mind and the soul of individuals. And the adversary has set forth to kill, steal, and destroy. But you have declared, I have come to give life and to give it more abundantly. I am praying for the abundant life of Jesus to overflow in our school systems. Use these facilitators to be the hands and feet of Jesus on the forefront of the warfare of America. There is a fight for the soul of mankind. And the Word declares that you will raise up a standard against the enemy. We are declaring, God, that your Word become light, become truth, become real on the campuses of our young people. In the name of Jesus, anoint them, God, with the wisdom and power to be able to stand as the hands and feet of Jesus. We pray for the young people that are in spiritual warfare and the demonic forces of hell that are at work in their mind. We rebuke the devourer today by the blood of the Lamb. And we declare not on our watch for we will stand in the gap and we will build a hedge against Satan and the forces of evil. By the bloodline of Jesus Christ. By the bloodline of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit we declare life. We declare freedom. We declare deliverance, Lord. God, we declare deliverance from perversion in their minds. We declare liberty, God, from alcohol and drug abuse. God, we declare liberty from the demonic forces that are working on computer screens in the lives of young people and adults alike. We rebuke the devourer today at the threshold of our heart and at the heart streams of America. Put a hedge about them, guard. Guard them. Put people in their lives to speak truth and life into their being. In the name of Jesus, we ask these things today. Amen and amen. I want to ask you as you open your eyes to just gaze down front this morning. And I want you to look at these folks that are working in our school systems and I want you to get a good image of them. Now, I know you know most of them by name, but I want you to remember this lineup of people. And in the days ahead, I want you to focus on their, their visual in your mind at your point of prayer. Amen. Come on, Miss Kayla. Amen. Hey, can she borrow one of your mics? Then you guys have liberty, okay? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So our fall festival is next Sunday on the 30th at 5 o'clock. We are still in need of candy and cakes. And if you are bringing chili for the chili contest, it needs to be ready at 4.30 for judging. And if you're also doing a car for trunk or treat, it also needs to be ready by 4.30 so we can get started at 5 o'clock. So if you have any questions, you can see me after church. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good morning. Everybody will stand as we worship the Lord.
Paul and Silas was in prison for spreading the gospel, spreading the news. And in the in prison, you know, it's not like today's prison, they were actually in shackles where their feet, um, they could not be moved. They could not move at all for days. And in the midst of all that, they developed a concert between the two, just singing and worshiping God. And I thought to myself, how could we not do the same? And we're not even in shackles. We're not in prison. We're free. We're free to do that. So I know sometimes you don't know the words. Lift your arms. When you don't know what else to do, just lift your hands. If you don't know what this song's, you know what the song, the words are, just lift your hands as we sing praises to him. When I look into your holiness, when I gaze into your loveliness, when all things that surround become shadows in the light of you, when I found the joy of reaching your Round become shadows in the light of you. Worship church. And I worship you. I worship you. The reason I live is to worship.
you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. I was standing there and I thought about how many had to chew the teachers and workers to come up and God kept speaking to me. I know it's God. This morning I want somebody to come up here and be anointed and pray more for Ashley. She's all nervous and anxious this morning because she has to go to the hospital this afternoon to deliver a baby girl. And we want to pray that Camper is healthy and all this goes smooth for Ashley. Summer, I want you to come up here for baby Wes. Man, he's in this house today, folks. Wendy, I want you to come up here for Justin Champion. He's 11 years old. He's in Chapel Hill fighting for his life with leukemia. And his mama, Brittany, is a single parent. She lost her husband two years ago. Amen. Um, Lucinda, I want you to come up here for a little boy. I don't even know this child, but his name's Noah. Some of y'all may know Noah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Family, Thank you. I want you to come up here for the family with their two-year-old child that had a memorial service for him on Friday. Yeah. For that family, their hearts are breaking. I can't imagine that baby. Amen. Have your way, Lord. 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 I don't normally do stuff like this, but I know this was God. Amen. And if there's anybody else in here that knows of a child or a family that is hurting today Amen. that you would like to come on in behalf of, these Amen. are just some that I know of Amen. that I've been praying for. But you may have known somebody you're welcome to come. Amen. And now I'm asking anybody that believes in the power of prayer and I believe in the power of prayer today. Amen. If you would like to join behind these ladies that I have called up. Hallelujah. If you would like to join behind them and pray for these hurting families, for these children that's got to go through surgeries. Little Wes has got to go through a major surgery. And you uh, I forgot Katie for Addie. There's a little girl, Addie, that's fighting for her life. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You sent your Lydia. Father, Abba, Father, you are our Abba, Father. Lord, your word says even before we ask, even before we've come before you, you know the needs, you know the hurts, you know the sorrow, you know the pain. But Lord, we believe you sent the comforter, the Holy Spirit. You sent your son, Jesus. Not only the one that would comfort, but the one that would heal. So Father, by the blood of Jesus, by the Spirit, the Comforter that comes to comfort each family, each situation. Lord, the one that transcends time and space. By the blood of your Son, Jesus, we cry out. Abba, Father, we cry out to you this morning, knowing that you are the answer. You are, oh God, the one that is enough, the God of impossibility. The God, Lord, that even before we ask, your word says that you answer. Lord, you answer. You answer, Holy Spirit. Ascend and descend over this families, Lord, that are needing a touch this morning. Lord, our seed, our children. Lord, those that you've given us. By the blood of Jesus, we thank you for life and abundant life. We thank you, Lord, for touching our seed, Lord. Those that are in the hospital today, even giving birth, birth to those that will be called by God. 
We thank you for divine intervention, divine protection. You are Jehovah Rapha. Rapha, we call upon you, Jehovah Rapha. We call upon you today. Healer, great physician, comforter, oh God, your presence may abide and reside and dwell among your people today, Lord, as we agree, Lord, on your promises that you sent your word. You, Jesus, you were wounded for their transgression, bruised for their iniquity. The chastisement of their peace was upon you. And by every stripe, we believe the healing power of Jesus moving right now in the midst of us today. In Jesus' name, we pray. And we give you thanks. We give you a shout of praise, oh Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord. Glory to the name of the Lord who causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. Praise be unto your name, O oh God. Praise, Lord. We give you praise, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise be, O oh God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Spirit of love and spirit of comfort. Glorious in majesty. Praise be unto your name, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Hey Amen. I just need to tell you this morning that it's not any mistake that you're here. It's not any mistake that you're in the presence of God this morning. He loves you today with an unconditional love and He knows right where you're at. And I don't know why I just can't get away from this today, but I just sense in my spirit that there's some folks in this room today that need to understand that God loves you today. It's easy to get caught up in the place of isolation when, when man has let you down. There's not a one in this room that man hadn't let you down. There's not a one of us that hadn't been in a place of discouragement when those that should have been encouraging us, they added to our grief. Amen. I just want to stand and apologize today on behalf of the body of Christ. I just feel an urgency that God has called me to stand and apologize on behalf of the body of Christ. That if you've been hurt in the name of church, in the name of Jesus, if, if, if ministers and church family have, have broken you and brought you to a place where you feel like that if that's what Christianity is, if that's what God is, I don't want no part of that. I just want to tell you today that ain't what God is. God is love. Unconditional love. Amen. And it's not God's will that any should perish. Amen. Not any. Yes, there are unanswered questions. There are things that roll through all of our minds. But guys, I want to tell you today, what I do know is the purity of Almighty God and His love for me. Amen. And He loves you today with an unconditional love. He loves you today. He embraces you today. Well, Pastor, if He loved me so much, why am I sick? Why am I going through this? Why am I facing this? I don't have the answer for that. But what I do know is what He said. I will turn all things for your good. Amen. It may not be good, but I'm going to turn it for your good. Amen. Amen. I'm going to turn it for your good. Amen. That place that you may be in today, as difficult as it is, I'm just telling you today, God's got a word for you this morning, and it is, I am working on your behalf. Amen. I got you today. Amen. Hold on. Amen. I got you today. Amen. I got you today. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. You can be seated if you feel like it. You can run and shout if you feel like it. I don't care what you long want to do long as God's in it. Amen. Hallelujah. We ain't no hurry. We're waiting on the presence of God. Amen. He's here. I just believe God's wanting to do something today. While they're moving, why don't we just go ahead and dismiss our children to their part of ministry next door? 
I just want to remind you that everybody's welcome to go. The kids can go, and I promise you they'll be blessed. Amen. Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, right next door. Grandma, granddaddy, if you've got a child needs to be in church, get them here on Wednesday night. They have that whole facility. And God working and blessing. It hadn't been but a few Sundays ago. We've had young'uns baptized right up front here because of what's happening next door. Amen. We thank God for each one of our young people. That is not the church of tomorrow. That is an important part of the church of today. Amen. They're valuable in the kingdom of God. They're valuable. Amen. Somebody smile and say God's good. Yes, He is. Amen. All the time. Amen. Amen. Wonderful job, choir. Thank you, praise team. We celebrate you and all that you're doing to build the kingdom. Amen. We thank God for everything you are doing. And I want you to know not a thing that you do, regardless of whatever it is you do in this building, whether you just walk by that little basket over there and put a dollar in to say, God, build your kingdom, from that right on to whether you sweep the floor in this building or whatever it is that you do, I want you to know God sees it. Amen. And it's all part of building the kingdom. And I thank each one of you for all that you do. We have been dealing now, this will be the third Sunday, with um, a series that God has laid on my heart that I needed to address. And when He brought this to me, probably two years ago, I resisted it. (laughs) I cast it off as long as I could, and then God just began to press in on me. And Somebody asked me yesterday evening, one of the men asked me, said, Pastor, you got your message ready for in the morning? I kind of laughed. I said, I wouldn't be here if I didn't have. <laughs> Amen. Um, they said, well, then how long have you had it ready? I said, well, it'll be finalized in the morning about 9 uh, o'clock because Darren wants it by 9.30. Uh, I said, but I've, I've had it on paper and ready to preach now for probably at least, uh, I'd say, about three months. We're talking about the wisdom of mental health. The first Sunday we dealt with the issues uh, of mental health that the enemy don't want you to know. You see, we've been taught, most of us, in the church realm and under the name of Christianity that when you get saved, you're not supposed to have those problems anymore. You're not supposed to wrestle with things like that anymore. Matter of fact, in a lot of my teaching in my early years, I didn't even think you were supposed to be depressed. I didn't think you were supposed to have a bad day. I mean, I I really thought there was something really wrong with me because I would go home and I remember standing in my bathroom looking in my mirror thinking, what is wrong with you? Now, I know what most of y'all are thinking. It's obvious what's wrong with you, preacher. I'm talking about in here, not here. I stand in there and I'm thinking, my Lord, what is wrong with me? I go to church with all these folks and they've got it all together. they got a smile on their face. And I tell y'all often, I'm such a slow learner. But one day my wife, she's going through a little something. You know, we preachers, we go through a little stuff too once in a while. And I knew she was at a bad place. Maybe I need to tell you it was long before we got here. It wasn't a bad place here, but... Okay, maybe it was here. I said, baby, what's wrong? She said, I am so tired of smiling on the outside while I'm dying on the inside. There's a lot of folks sitting on church pews across the world today that are smiling on the outside, but they're dying on the inside. But I believe there's a God in heaven that don't condemn you for your feelings. I believe there's a God in heaven that understands your emotions and knows the pain and the hurt thereof. Because they're just times that we're battling. And in most cases, my biggest battle is with me. I'm just trying to get over me. I'm trying to keep me in check. I'm trying to keep me on focus. But I just got to tell you today, there are many times in the midst of 
all the me stuff going on, God will bring some other folks to my plate. And in the midst of that, it can be overwhelming as it is in every one of your lives. And the devil wants you to believe that there's something wrong with you when you're battling. I don't know what book we are reading, but this book said, I am in spiritual warfare. I don't read where I'm on a roller coaster screaming and hollering, oh, ain't this life wonderful. I have an enemy that is seeking to devour me. But I have a God that is for me. (laughs) And He says, if I be for you, it doesn't matter what is against you. And that preach is good. And we get excited about that. And I love that clap and the embrace of that. But to be honest with you, when I walk out of this room and I get my automobile and then all of a sudden me rushes in, Alan, and I'm dealing with the stuff in my life, can I just be real with y'all this morning? I, I'm tired of, of people looking at the preacher and saying, well, he didn't speak to me. Well, guess what? Some of y'all don't speak to me either. I'm tired that the preacher don't appreciate what I'm doing. Well, I'm going to tell you, some of y'all don't appreciate what I do either. But I just want to tell you, it's okay to be us in the presence of God because we are imperfect people in need of a perfect God. Let's just get over ourselves, lay off that spiritual garbage, and walk into the presence of God Open up our heart and say, Now God, for the next ever how many minutes to preachers, God, I want you to do something in me today that will create lasting change. Peace of mind. uh, Two truths to remember when you're battling depression. And by the way, saved people can be depressed. Okay? When we feel overwhelmed, it can be easy to isolate ourselves. But church is a place we can go when we don't have it all together. Oh, no. I want to tell you what it really looks like. We're looking for one more. And we're okay with that until God sends one in this room that don't look like us. I ain't sure you're ready for this. I'm okay with it until you sing a song that I don't like. I got almost 13 years under my belt. Y'all just sit down and relax. I got this this morning. I've come to tell you today, it's time that we take a deep breath in the presence of God and say, now God, it's me. I want you to work on me today. Because I've got some stuff going on that I've bought a lie for way too long. And I've told myself, as long as I show up on Sunday morning and I make out like everything's all right, I can walk back out of here and I'm good for another week. I want to tell you, there is a God in heaven today that loves you with an unconditional love when you walk in the door of the church and nobody don't speak to you. Amen. Amen. There's a God that still loves you when you've done all you know to do to hold on. And some good meaning Christian, maybe even the pastor, walks by you with a holier than thou sharp knife and cuts off the only thread that you were holding on by. God still loves you. Amen. So this week we're learning how to fight depression from a spiritual perspective. It's a hope-filled message you don't want to miss. Amen. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, I don't want to miss it. I want to introduce y'all to my covenant partner. He stays up in the western part of the state. and I talk to him every single week. We have a, a, an, an in-depth conversation. He's praying about what I got going on. I'm praying about what he's got going on. 
Very rarely do, does a day go by that I don't text him or he don't text me. We're doing life together because I just think everybody needs a person in their life that don't have any skin in their game that you can just be real in their presence. I didn't know that when I first started ministry. And I like to die. Because I won't big enough, and I'm going to be honest with you, that was a painful thing for me to admit. Because my entire life I've been taught, if I can get my hands on it, I'll handle it. But I realized serving God, I could not do. And I'm being honest with you, I wrestled for so long. I was screaming and hollering at the windshield coming home. I was pulling my hair out. I was going absolutely crazy. Well, why didn't you ask God to save you? Hoss, I was saved. <laughs> I was serving in the church. I know I was saved because at that time I was teaching the youth Sunday school class. And if you ain't saved, you won't teach young people. You'll go to jail. Pray for them people next door right now. I believe Brother Keith's over there, so he may need a lot of prayer this morning. Amen? Thank God for those that are serving. But one day, laying prostrate on my face before the Lord, I said, God, I'm done. I can't do this no more. And I heard the Spirit of God as it just covered me. It reminded me of the time of Jesus had walked in that room and, and, and He lay Himself on that body. There comes a time when you've got to come to a spiritual defining moment where you say, God, I can't do this no more. And I just believe this is one of those days in the, in the history of the church where some folks need to come to a place and say, God, I can't do this no more. I'm tired of smiling when I'm dying on the inside. The Bible says that He came that I might have life and that I might have it more abundantly. I want to tell you there is an abundant life in Christ Jesus, but it don't come cheap. I brought it today. And God knows my heart. There ain't a boastful bone in my body because out of all the people in this room, I am the least deserving. But there it is. You know what those pages represent? They're not messages. I got them on my phone <laughs> and in my iPad. You know what that is? Let me tell you what it is. On the top of every page in this book, I write these words every single morning. Arise in prayer, doing the work of prayer. I just want to tell you something. The place that God wants you and I to arrive will not take place because you walk in this room on a Sunday morning and any preacher, much less this preacher, stand before you and give you a philosophy for life. There has to take place in your life and in your heart an encounter with a holy God that loves you so much, He's not willing to leave you like you are, and it ain't cheap. Because every morning of my life, when my clock goes off at 5 or 5.15, 5.30, whatever time I set it for that day, based upon the rest of my day, when I arrive to give God my tithe of my time for that day, I'm telling you I don't want to get up and do it. It is work at that moment. But by the time I finish that hour, hour and a half, whatever it is that day, I'm not working any longer. I'm basting in the presence of Almighty God, ready to go do war for the Master again today. And if you think the devil is going to let you waddle in this room and hear a message on depression and go back out that door victorious, honey, I got a piece of property I'd love to sell you. Because you'll believe anything. There's a God in heaven that loves you today, but there's a price to be paid. And the price that has to be paid is, God, I lay myself down, and it is no longer I that live, but now, Lord, you live in me. And when God starts living in you, it won't matter how loud the music is. Why are you talking about that stuff? Because that's the guy I used to be. I sat there and complained about everything. I didn't like nothing. You know why I didn't like nothing? Because all I could see was what was going on around me and I couldn't see God for all the stuff that was clouding my vision. 
and all that was wrong in everybody else's life and all of a sudden all that was wrong in my life and no longer could I see God and I was at a place where I was ready to quit. We're talking about battling depression today and realizing that there is a God that is for you. And I want you to know today that it's not new. It's all through the pages of the book. I don't have time to preach it all to you, so I'm going to give you a tidbit. Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 25. It said, Anxiety in the heart of man causes depression. Did you hear that? That ain't a slogan I made up. That is Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 25. Anxiety in the heart of a man causes depression. Anxiety in the heart of a man causes depression. You know why you're depressed? Because you're anxious. Wait on the Lord. Hear this, but... Aren't you glad when God shows you what's wrong? We used to have a, a doctor in Salemburg where I grew up and we went to him. His name was Dr. Rolls. Many of y'all remember him. When you walked in Dr. Rolls' office, you didn't have to go nowhere else. He had a whole wall uh, of medicine over there. And it didn't matter what you went there for. If you had a toe ache or if you had a cold, you might as well get ready because before you left in there, you were going to get a shot of penicillin. Didn't matter what else you done. You were going to get a little cup, you were going to go in his bathroom. <laughs> Miss Oltry, his nurse, she'd look at that cup and throw it away. Man, she was good. And then he'd give you a shot. If you needed medicine beyond that, he'd reach up there and get it and give it to you. But what always got me when I walked in his office, never been in his office any time in my life that he didn't ask me one question before he started anything. He'd say, what's wrong with you? And I remember thinking, Doc, if I knew what was wrong with me, I wouldn't have come here. I come to you because I need you to tell me what's wrong with me. <laughs> I was perplexed in many ways. But that's the way we are. We come into the presence of God. And we're just saying, God, I don't know what's wrong with me, but I want to tell you today, God knows what's wrong with you. And God is saying to me and you today, if you're anxious, if there's anxiety in your heart today, it'll cause you to be depressed. He didn't say it'll cause you to go to hell. He said it'll cause you to be depressed. And depression will deprive you of the good things that is around you. It will not keep you out of heaven, but it'll make you miserable while you're getting there. You ever seen a bunch of church folks and it looked like they were sucking on persimmons? If you ain't, come up here and join me. No, I'm just joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Come out. Don't say that, Mike. I was reading his mind. I'm sorry. I'm getting back to this. But a good word makes it glad. God didn't say you won't go and be depressed. What he did say was a good word will make you glad. Folks, that's simple. All right? I'll see y'all later. Y'all have a good day. I'm done. I could do that. I could stop right there because that's the antidote. You're going to have a bad day. You're going to be depressed. There are going to be days when you feel like getting up. But for the love of God, take a deep breath and say, God still loves me and I'm going to encourage myself if nobody else ever does again. Everybody ain't for you, even if they're riding with you. If you believe they are, run out of gas. See how many I help you push. If they help you push, they're for you. Come on, somebody. Some of us have run out of gas a long time ago spiritually, amen? And the problem is we've collapsed on the side of the road trying to push our own wagon. Come on. It's real this morning. Two truths I want you to remember today. If you're to taking notes, I want you to remember this. When you're battling depression, 
There are four causes of it. Let me go and give you the two truths. If not, I'll have you lost. First off, truth number one, your emotions are valid. I just need to tell you today, it's okay. Well, I've been done wrong, preacher. You're right. I'm sure you've been done wrong. Well, they hurt my feelings. Well, I'm sure they hurt their, your feelings. I'm not in any way trying to displace uh, the fact that your pain is not real. I know it's real. I get that it's real. Truth number two, your situation feels hopeless. I get it because when you're depleted, you're depleted because you're out of resources, right? So let's deal with that. For way too long, we've heard the preacher get up and say, you ought not to feel that way. God is for you. Why don't you get up and be happy about that? Well, I am for a minute or two, but happiness runs out, and I got to sit down and rest like them guys on that screen, amen? But when you're at peace with God, you can kick your shoes off in the presence of Almighty God and sit under the breath of God and gather yourself and know that everything is all right. Amen. Why? Because a good word, it'll make you glad. So now let's deal with that. There are four roots that cause of depression. First off, it's biological. Some of y'all are depressed simply because your mom and daddy was depressed. Being real. Wait a minute, my mom and daddy were one of the prayingest couples I ever met. I know it, and they were probably depressed too. Everybody that prays, I know. Everybody that prays, they're depressed. You know why they're praying? Because they're depressed. Preacher, somebody come on and help me this morning. I'm tired of doing church and not getting no better. I remember going to the altar and I was seeking God for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. God knows I'm telling the truth, Sister Lady. And you know what the dear saint of God standing right beside of me said to me? If I'm lying, I'm dying. You ever heard that before? <laughs> she leaned up in my ear. Y'all know what the Holy Ghost slobber is when they spitting all over you when they're talking to you? She said, son, fake it till you make it. That's exactly what she told me. Now you're Lord hound mercy, but I'm telling you right now, every one of us have experienced that. Every preacher that's ever filled a pulpit said the joy of the Lord is your strength. Act happy when you ain't happy. Well, I'm tired of acting, amen. And I tried that mess. And I'm telling you, I was depressed. I was wore out. And what it produced in my life was this. They stand in church and sing joy unspeakable and full of glory. That made me nauseated to my stomach because I wasn't happy. I was miserable because everybody else in there got a smile on their face and I'm over here trying to smile and dying. And I'm thinking, what is wrong with me? Let me tell you what's wrong with me. Too many people were trying to fake it till they made it. God said, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. If you are a child of God, that's a quotation now. I'm not questioning your salvation. If you say you saved, I believe you saved. If you prayed, that's all I know to go on, okay? He'll reveal it one day when he opens the book. Amen. Now you can fake it if you want to, but I'm telling you, you ain't going to make it. You okay, care what nobody told you. You can fake it, but you ain't going to make it. Only the righteous are going to enter that city. Well, who's righteous? No, not one but him. That's why I got to die that he can live, Amen. Man, I'm preaching better than y'all shouting. I'm okay with that. I'm accustomed to it. I'm just telling you this morning, you got to have a good word. Some of you are... Depressed because your family has been depressed before you. 
Some of y'all are depressed because of a relationship that you're allowing in your life. You're letting the wrong people speak into you. I'm telling you right now, if you're a discourager, you ain't going to talk to me much. You might talk to me, but you're going to catch the back ear flaps of my ear because I'm going in a different direction. It's all right. You ain't got to entertain everybody's conversation. The problem is too many of us in the church world have listened to the devil for way too long. I know I'm crazy, but I'm preaching you the truth. Amen. I'd rather be crazy for Jesus and get there and hear him say, well done, than to fake it till I make it because I ain't going to make it. Some of you are depressed because of circumstances. Now, some of you might be like me. Most of your circumstances are self-inflicted. Some of y'all, I know there's a few of you. There's been a time or two in my life when I didn't deserve what happened. And I'll be honest with you, until I got real with Jesus, that's all I could see. I couldn't see that that I had self-inflicted and that that I had brought on me. All I could see is what you had done to me. And how you had let me down. And how you had hurt me. Some of y'all have been done wrong and I get it. But I'm telling you, you ain't going to get no better till you get over it. Can I just quote my wife for a minute? My wife says hatred and bitterness is like drinking poison and sitting and watching, waiting for the other person to die. They ain't going to die. You're going to die, but they ain't going to die. Amen? Some of you are depressed because of loss and circumstances and situations. And some of you are depressed because of, I like to call it, you've been double-crossed. You're depressed because of the church, because of spirituality. You're depressed because of a background of people. Now, there's a cross for everyone to bear. Amen. I believe the Word backs up that song. But there's a cross that, Religious people will put on you. I don't know if y'all noticed or not, I bought me some new shirts. I like them. Because I'm free. I ain't got a necktie on. And I like it. I lived under that bondage for a number of years. I don't care how many of y'all, y'all can wear a tuxedo if you want to. And I'm still working on it. One Sunday, I preached in my Big Smiths, and they may be coming back. I don't know. If y'all don't know what Big Smiths are, they're overalls, by the way. Somebody said, Preacher, you act like you're free this weekend. I want to say, I got my overalls on. <laughs> but some of us are double crossed. We're trying to live up to that that Grandma Susie, or Aunt Betsy, or Sister So and So, or Brother Diligence put on our back and said, you got to walk like this. you got to talk like... I had a man tell me one time, said, you can't preach in my church. And I said, okay. <laughs> I didn't really want to, no how. <laughs> he said, your hair's too long. <laughs> I said, okay. <laughs> I'm good with that. He don't know how happy I was. Because I don't want to be around that kind of spirit. I just don't want to be around that kind of spirit. Maybe I'm meddling. But this is what I know. Ephesians 6 and 12. I don't think I give it to you, Darren. I apologize for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world and against mighty powers in this dark world and against evil spirits in heavenly places. I want to tell you, your neighbor ain't your problem. I've already confessed this twice this week, so I'm going to go ahead and confess it now publicly. As a young minister, 
I'm going to talk to you, perfect one, because you'll understand this. The rest of them may not. I prayed for some folks. And I asked God to go ahead and promote them on to heaven. Now, some of y'all are probably going to call a vote this afternoon and have me removed as your pastor. It don't matter. I'm going to preach the truth. And I prayed because I thought it was those people. It won't those people, Wendy. It was a spirit that rests on those people. Because I watched some of those people be promoted to heaven. Listen, guys, they want bad people. They needed to go to heaven. And I knew they needed to go to heaven. And I prayed, God, go ahead and promote them because I know their heart and they're pure at heart, but there's an ill spirit that's working within them. I mean, I do everything I can to get somebody to walk in the door and they got something smart to say to them when they walk in the door. Listen, we don't need a greeter standing at the door that when you walk in the door, they say, well, what the world are you doing here? <laughs> they're doing the same thing here you're doing here. Hopefully they'll get in the altar and maybe you will too. <laughs> Amen? I can't believe you're here. I bet they can't believe you're here. <laughs> Woo! God called me. Y'all talk to him about it. I'm still baffled about it myself, to be honest with you. <laughs> oh, my God, help me, Jesus. I prayed and I said, God, promote them. Take them on the glory. I'm so tired of dealing with that spirit. But let me tell you what I discovered. It was a spirit. It won't them. And when they left, that spirit showed up on somebody else. It's the reason why I tell you that we got to guard that door right there and keep that spirit off of us. Listen to yourself once in a while and ask yourself, am I operating in that spirit? And if I am, nip it in the bud, Barney. That was my intro, by the way. So now I'm going to preach in about three minutes. The prophet Jeremiah, just so you know, it hadn't just happened with you. Y'all remember Jeremiah? He was a man of God, a prophet, he was called. I want you to hear his words in, Lam in Lamentations chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, 5 and 8, 17 and 20. He says these words. I am the man who has seen affliction by the rod of the Lord's wrath. He has given me away and made me to walk in darkness rather than light. He has besieged me and surrounded me with bitterness and hardship. He has made me dwell in darkness like those long dead. He has walked me and so I cannot escape. He has weighed me down with chains even when I call out and I cry for help, he shuts up, he shuts out my prayer. I have been deprived of peace. I have forgotten what prosperity is. So I say, my splendor is gone, and all that I had hoped from the Lord, I remember my afflictions and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I will remember them, and my soul is downcast within me. He was broken. He had seen the house of the Lord lying in ruins. He had seen his kindred dead. He's broken. He was depressed. He was in discouragement. Now I get back to the two truths. When you're battling depression, your emotions are valid. Not arguing that. But they are not permanent. Somebody needs to look at your neighbor and say, my situation is not permanent. Okay? Number two, your situation feels hopeless. I got you. I've been there. <laughs> but with God, there's always hope. Somebody needs to look at your neighbor and say, hey, but with God, there's always hope. Amen. Then how do I overcome it? By naming your emotions. It opens the door to changing your emotions. 
If you're afraid, if you're hopeless, if you're helpless, if you're rejected, if you're hurt, it's not, it, it is not spiritual not to name your emotions. I want you to get this. Because God said, ask. You what? You shall receive. Seek, and you will what? If God is really loves me like He loves me, hoss, He ain't just worried about me getting to heaven. He come that I have life and that I have it more abundantly. He didn't say I just come so you could get to heaven. Even though that's the most important ingredient, I believe God wants me to live this life and enjoy my walk. Because if I'm downtrodden, if I am eating last week's uh, 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 cold soup and I'm ready to throw up, how in the world can I be a blessing to anybody around me? Come on, somebody. How many times have we been in the midst of people and thought to ourselves, well, if that's what Christianity looks like, I don't want no part of it. You got to name it. You got to ask for it. You got to seek it. And see, we're not going to make permanent decisions based on temporary emotions. Come on. Because the devil will tell you, you'd be better off if you won't even hear. He'll tell you, they don't care nothing about you down there at that church. Why are you even going? <laughs> well, I even thought about not coming to preach this week. I did. Might as well be honest. I was like, I'd call Sister Lydia. I'm going to be at the beach anyhow. I might as well just sit right there. <laughs> I thought it. Now I got a choice. I can waste away in that feeling or I can get me a word. And I can encourage myself. <laughs> and I can begin to say this. You hear? Now, this is the same guy. Now I want you to hear what he said. He found him a good word. He found him a good word. And this is what he said. He said in verse 21, 22 and 23, With God there is always hope. Jeremiah recalled a good word. And this is what he said. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. <laughs> this is the same man that we heard crying out to God. God, I'm worse than a dead man. I pray and you don't even hear me. But he got hold of him a word. And he held on to God until God showed up. Amen. And he said, yet this I call to mind. I remind myself of this. Amen. I encourage myself right here. And therefore, he said, I have hope. Look at verse 22. Because the Lord's great Love, we are not consumed for His compassion. It never fails. Somebody needs to encourage yourself today. It may be downtrodden. It may look like there is no way. But God's mercy never fails. Look at verse 23. They are new. Somebody say new. I give up yesterday, but today I am renewed. Amen. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, O oh Lord. Why don't we just go ahead and move on to verse 24, bit? I'm happy about it. Amen. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for Him. See, the problem, too many of us have made other people our portion. Amen. And if you don't bless me, then I'm depressed. I can't even look to my wife. And Hoss, I'm going to tell you, I got a, me an encourager. I sent her my first little old fish yesterday. <laughs> sent her a picture of it. I had it in the palm of my hand. And all I'm going to say to you was there was plenty of hand <laughs> left. Some of y'all seen it, and y'all snickered, and at least I caught one. <laughs> you know what my wife sent back to me right quick like? Baby, you caught one. 
That's an encouragement. You know the reason why God gave me her? Because he knew I needed her. Now, I want strong like another guy that was with me, and I'm not going to name no names. They know who they are, but I'm not naming no names. I sent his wife a picture of his first catch, and she sent back to me, tell him to roll it in plenty of seafood breader. <laughs> Scott, don't you do that. Debbie, you let the record stand that I didn't roll you out. <laughs> what I'm trying to expose to you this morning, sometimes somebody will encourage you and sometimes they won't. <laughs> amen? Nothing wrong with good humor, amen? You don't think the Lord ain't got a sense of humor look in the mirror when you get home, amen? <laughs> I felt the spirit then. I don't know what spirit it was, but I felt one. So I'm going to give you a little bit of Greek so you'll think I am something before we leave. The Lord's great love, and the Greek word for that is hesed. You see, we can't understand God's love. We don't get God's love. Just, just so y'all don't think I'm a one and done, I'm going to give you another Greek word today, and it is called rahamo, and that is there's always hope. Are you listening to me? If you get your focus on God's love for you and understand that there's always hope, it won't matter how bad I fail you. And by the way, I just want to go ahead and set the record straight. If you stick around long enough, I will fail you. But God won't. I will let you down. 42 years, Tammy can say amen and in a hurry. But I'm just coming to tell you today, I'm not her hope. God is. And He'll never fail. you got to get it today. Now I want you to hear it again. Jeremiah 24 through 26, Jeremiah recalled a good word. He preached to himself. He said, I say to myself, somebody needs to say to yourself this morning, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for Him. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in Him. And to those who seek Him, it is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Stand to your feet. If you're depressed today, there ain't no reason to be there. Wait a minute, preacher. I thought you spent all this time trying to tell me that you weren't going to do that. No, I just went on and done it because I wanted you to feel natural. Because that's what man will do to you. They'll discourage you. They'll mean to be well. The good thing about it is you can pull it out. We got to talk about how many fish we had caught. One gentleman said to me, he said, Pastor, I'm reminded of your words. There are no big eyes or little U's. We're all in this together. I believe it was six we all caught. He said, we caught six. I said, amen, brother. I want to tell you today, God's for you this morning. But sometimes you've got to just remind your own self that God loves you and God's got you and God's going to pull you out. Because he's got plans for you. Some of you have been down so low you can't even see the glimpse of day. Did you hear Jeremiah's prayer? <laughs> Heavenly Father, we come to this moment. I don't know where they're at. I don't know what they need. But I know based upon the comments that have been coming in over the last two, three weeks, God, that I know you're right in the middle of this series. And God, we're tired of faking it till we make it because we know we can't make it. But God, with your help, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. And so today, God, I invite you into my life. I open the door of my heart and I'm honest and open with you. I'm very candid with you this morning. And I say, God, there are times when I just don't feel like I can make it. But I will encourage myself. Somebody needs to pray that today. I will encourage myself. There are going to be times when I need a good word and I will bring my good word. If nobody else brings it, I'm going to bring it. Amen. Because I refuse to go down. I refuse to be defeated. God's done too much for me for me to give up, give in, or quit. I'm going through. Amen. There's some people in this room today you need to step out like our our church pastor's already done and he's bringing these requests. 
Some of you need to bring your petition to the Lord. And you need to say, God, that's me. I've been hearing me all morning, God. But I need you today. I'm stepping out today and I'm saying in the presence of Almighty God, God, I will encourage myself. Amen. My brother, my sister, my husband, my wife, my pastor, nobody else might not encourage me. But today, God, I will encourage myself. Amen. No, I'm going to stand here and wait patiently on God and let Him send somebody over. I've been there. I prayed all them prayers. Well, what if somebody don't come? What right now if God is speaking to somebody's heart, but yet they're timid and they just simply don't go? What you going to do then? God's saying to you today, grab hold and hold on. Encourage yourself. Anybody else? Thank God for these that have come. Anybody else needs to come and just say to Him, Lord, I've come today to promise you I will encourage myself. I will not give in. I will not give up. I will not quit. I will not go down defeated, God, because I know you are for me and you love me. You have saved me. The church didn't save me. The preacher didn't save me. Nobody else saved me, God. It was you. And today I encourage myself in the presence of Almighty God, for God is for me. And I, God is for me. God is for me. Amen. Hallelujah. God, you see these around this altar today, God. You see these that have been open and honest with you. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Today I encourage myself. Today I find peace at the altar of the feet of Jesus today. For today I have determined I will not quit. I will not give up. When I feel like there is no way, God, you are the way. You are the truth. You are the life. Amen. More than words can say, I need you more. Hallelujah. Than ever hallelujah. 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 Oh, glory be to God. God, you see these hearts this morning. You see these that are speaking with you right now, God. They are encouraging their self. (laughs) But as they encourage their self, you come in like a floodgate. And your love and your presence, it encourages them at your feet, Lord. May you wrap your loving arms around them. May you embrace them today. More than the God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. More than the song I see. More than the next heart Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I will be by your side. May they be encouraged. Because I never want to go. By your stripes, we are healed. I encourage myself. I don't listen to what anyone else says. Doesn't matter what the report says. Doesn't matter what the fear of my mind or my heart may say. Today I just encourage myself. And I say, God, I'm going to believe your report. I'm going to believe what you have said about me. And you have said that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. No report spoken over me or about me shall determine my outcome. Because today I choose, I choose, I choose to encourage myself by the presence of Almighty God. It's not by might nor by power, but it's by your spirit. If it was hinged upon me and what I could do, it would fail. (laughs) Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Cause I never oh, praise your holy name. Praise your holy name. To my own heart. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank more you, Jesus. More than yesterday, I Glory need to God. You hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. More than words. Thank you, Jesus. Say, I need you Thank more you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Today I choose to encourage myself 
Today I choose to embrace the promises of God that He's spoken over my life. More than yesterday, I need you more. I choose to remove myself from the forces, God, that are keeping me from the good things of God. Today I choose you, Lord. I choose you. I choose you. I need you more. I choose you, Lord, above political preferences. I choose you today above spiritual preferences. I choose you today above all things, God. Today I choose you. And Lord, as time goes by, for you have loved me, I you have healed me, you have set me free, you have made me whole, you have brought back. joy unspeakable and full of glory into my life, I where I didn't know where it was going to come back. from. I didn't know how it was going to look. I didn't even know if it was possible, but you, you have done that for me. More than yesterday. So today I embrace I you, O oh Lord. You, O oh Lord. More than words can say, I need you more. Oh, praise your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. And Glory to God. Hallelujah. God, you know the need. You God, you know the heart. You know the situation. I need you. But God, you're God of that situation as well. You've more already than made the air I breathe. God, you have not given her more a than the of song fear, I see. but of love and of peace and of more than the sound next heartbeat. I rebuke that spirit of fear, God. I, more I feel it than all about her anything, this morning, and that Lord, spirit as time that goes is by, upon her. I rebuke it today. In the I name will of be Jesus. by your side. God, the Word says, who the Spirit says, free is free indeed. You, we're free from that, God. Go God, I give it to you. I to trust you fully. I know, God, what your Word says over my Lord, life. I and today, I choose to encourage myself and embrace what I know to be so. Not my might, because if I trust in my might, I trust in my power, it will fail. But today, I lean not to my own understanding, but I lean upon you, Lord. And you said, I have not given you a spirit of fear. Hallelujah. I receive that today, God. I will not fear what man says. I will not fear what any report is. I will not fear what I think might could be. More than the song. Because God, your word says, you will not fail me. You will not fail me. And your promises are yes and amen. And today I encourage myself in your presence. I rebuke that spirit of fear. Cause I never want to And I say to you today, God, I embrace your love and your peace. Your peace, God. You said you to me, you said to me, He's saying to you this morning, buddy. He's saying to you, Peace I leave with you. My peace. Not as the world gives peace. But my peace I leave with you. God's got it. God's got it. God's got it. Hey, man. He's got it. I when I don't more. see it, when I don't feel it, when I don't I know it, God's got it. Amen. More than yesterday, Hallelujah. I need you. Thank you, Jesus. More. Amen. Why don't you give God a hand clap of praise this morning? Whom the Spirit says free is free indeed. Amen. I love you today. I know sometimes I get to preaching it. You might think I'm mad with the world. No, I'm mad with the devil of this world. And I'm mad at what he does to God's people. I love you today, and I want you to know that. If you don't get anything else out of this service today, I want you to walk out them doors saying, you know what, that preacher right there, I believe he loves me. I love you today. Brother Cliff, God's been good, ain't he? <laughs> oh, y'all, look at, look at y'all and y'all how good he looks today. If God be for you, it don't matter what the report is. It don't matter what the report is. What matters is when God wakes you up in the wee hours of the morning and says, I got plans for you. <laughs> Woo! He's no respecter of persons. What he's done for Cliff Turpin, he'll do for you. There's a good word of encouragement. Take it and encourage yourself with it. Amen? Amen. Amen. 
We're going to close out today with a special prayer. We're just going to ask God to encourage those that are needing encouragement. There's some folks sick in their body. I'm not, guys, I've just told you, it's real. I'm not trying to diminish that, what you feel, what you know to be true of your life. If you're suffering in your body, I'm not telling you to name it, to you, you know, claim it and name it. I'm not telling you that. I'm just telling you today, God says, I got you. God says, by, your, by my stripes, you are healed. Amen? And God will not fail you. Well, then why does people die? Because the Bible says it's appointed unto man wants to die. Dying ain't the deal. The judgment is the deal. You better be ready, guys. He's coming for you. Whether you're well or sick, He's coming. It's appointed unto man wants to die. You're going to die. The funeral home man is smiling today because he's it's a guaranteed deal. I sell a little Debbie cakes. It ain't a guaranteed deal. For, I can look at those in the room and tell who support me. <laughs> but if I'm an undertaker, you all are mine. I'm getting you. Get ready. He's coming. But until He comes, you can be happy in Jesus. <laughs> you can be happy. I know what I'm talking about because I've been sad and now I am happy. I was lost, but now I'm found. I want us to pray this closing prayer. There's some folks that are sick. There's some folks that are struggling, and it's real. They need encouraging. And I want you just to pray, God, let me be an encourager this week. And, and you know, if God lays it on your heart to send somebody a text message, don't put it off. Just go ahead and do it. If God moves upon you to call somebody and pray with them, why don't you just do it? If you're sitting in the restaurant and God speaks to you, why don't you just encourage that little lady or that man? Why don't you be a blessing? God wants me and you to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you, Lord, for every individual that's in this room. There are no big eyes or little use. We're all just imperfect people in need of a, of a perfect God. And God, you come that I might have life and that I might have it more abundantly. You came, Lord, that I might have a peace in the midst of the turmoil of this world. God, my happiness doesn't resolve upon how I feel. It resolves upon whom I serve. And today, I'm fully confident. I am fully persuaded that the one that keepeth me is able. But not to me alone, but to whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord. May each of us go in your peace and in your favor. May we learn to encourage ourselves in the moments of depression. When the enemy comes in, you will raise up a standard, but we got to reach down and pick it up. Father, I thank you today for every individual in this room, those that have joined us through our church. May they go in peace and in the love of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Remember, if God be for you, it doesn't matter who or what is against you. Amen and amen. Wisdom for mental health. See, if we listen to the wrong ones, if we listen to people, Brother Matthew, we'll never be able to be cured from what, for what's wrong with us. Because some of it's self-inflicted and most of it's self-inflicted comes from us not having God first in our life. I know I was a sick man for many a year. And the biggest problem was of my sickness was that I didn't have Dr. Jesus as first in my life. Now if you're feeling uh, like you're not up to par this morning, if you're feeling like you're right at uh, death's door, then I would ask you one more time before you take your last breath, if you don't have our Lord and Savior in your life first, I would encourage you to hold up your hands and say, Jesus, I ask you to come into my life because if you are serious and if you believe that with all your heart, I'll guarantee you, you'll see that machine that is about the red line hit a come back and jump off the screen because Jesus has been present and is present in your body.
wisdom for mental health, and I just gave it to you. The name of it is called Jesus. The ingredient that you need, a teaspoon, is called Jesus. That injection that you need this morning is called Jesus. And I pray that you will start seeking and, and come and go to a house of worship and ask, I want a dose of that medicine called Jesus. So glad that y'all with us. I'm turning it over to Brother Matthew where he can close us out this morning with a prayer. And he's got a teaspoon of Jesus for you. Brother Matthew, close us out, a young man. All right. Dear Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day, this beautiful present day that you've given every single person that's in this building leaving to go home and everybody that's out there. It's called present because it's a gift from you, Lord. No matter what the day looks like or what's ahead of us in each and every day in our lives, it's a gift from the Heavenly Father. Now, as we go in peace, watch over every single person as they go to work, they go to school, or just do anything that's a little more personal or go through something that's a little bit more personal in life, whether it be a family member or a friend, sickness in their own bodies, Lord. Give them a feeling sensation in their minds because that is why the enemy fights us in our minds because it's our strongest tool. But we know that there is a God in heaven that is in control of all things. And if he be for us, it doesn't matter who or what is against us. That's right. And if they realize that, at the end of the day, help them to just simply say, God has been faithful. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. Pray to see you soon. God bless y'all.